I've been using Karch Linux for over one year now, and for those that are interested in trying out Arch Linux, I'll go over some of the questions here, like what is Arch Linux, who is Arch Linux for, what is Arch Linux best at, can you use Arch Linux as your main operating system. First, what is Arch Linux? This right here is not exactly Arch Linux. What you're seeing is i3, a tiling window manager. But to install it, I had to install Arch Linux. This is Arch Linux. It's just some text uh, on a black screen. After you install Arch Linux, you have to choose a desktop environment or a window manager. For a popular option is KDE Plasma or GNOME. The difference is that the desktop environment has a lot more features from the start, like notifications, Wi-Fi, whereas when you install just a window manager, you get just this, a window manager. You don't get, you don't get a wallpaper, you don't get a lot of things. I've mainly used Arch Linux for creating programs and YouTube videos. In this one year, I've managed to monetize my channel and create my most popular video with 80,000 views in Arch Linux. For editing my videos, I've managed to set up DaVinci Resolve. Probably all of my videos have been made using DaVinci Resolve in Arch Linux. So can you use Arch Linux as your main operating system? You can, but I don't advise you doing so. For example, for installing DaVinci Resolve, I had a lot of issues. It was really difficult to initially install it. And after installing it, turns out the free version the free version of DaVinci Resolve has a lot of limitations and sometimes crashes unexpectedly. The crashes are not that often, but they are still very annoying. The problem with DaVinci Resolve is that when you export the video, you don't have a lot of good options. The output will be some uh, very large file that is 30 or 40 gigabytes, which uh, has to be formatted. And when importing videos, I cannot import regular videos with the popular audio codec or video codec. They also have to be formatted. Usually when you want to install an application, you just type sudo pacman-s and the name of the application. For example, let's say GIMP. But most often when you want to install something, you have to search for it on Google and find the Arch Wiki page for it if you or lucky and there is a page. For example, for Visual Studio Code, there are a couple of options. There is the regular version, which you can install with Pacman, and there is another version which uses the AOR package. You cannot install AOR packages with Pacman. AOR packages have to be installed in a completely different way. It's not a problem installing them. Uh, there are some packages that help you uh, with installing AOR packages, for example, yay. So I think it's yay s and then the name. This will install the AOR package. But the problem with AOR packages is that you have to check each one of them what they do. Usually people don't do this and I don't do this. I just install popular AOR packages and just hope that if there is a problem, uh, someone will say something. But usually, when you install AOR packages, you don't know what the package does on your computer. And in the case with Visual Studio Code, which option should you pick? I installed the one with Pacman, but the problem with that one was that I was missing extensions. You couldn't install every available extension. So I had to go to the AOR package. And this is still a positive example because for some other applications, you have to go on and read the wiki uh, because sometimes you will have problems and, for example, a lot of applications have troubleshooting. You have some problem, you check the troubleshooting and now you have to debug and solve it. And you are all on your own. And this is still a positive case because sometimes, even after all the troubleshooting, you cannot find a solution. And you are left with searching on Reddit, for example, Arch Linux. You have to go around in forums to read how other people solve the solution. And the thing that will turn off the most people is that what I'm sharing here was a lot later in my journey. Just trying to install NVIDIA drivers took me about a week. If you have NVIDIA, you're a little bit screwed. 
trying to use Linux because for NVIDIA, they are still using proprietary drivers. For AMD, they, I think they are open source, so there is it's a lot better using AMD, but for NVIDIA, this is everything you have to read just to set up NVIDIA drivers. You have to check the architecture of your card. Depending the architecture, this decides which package you should install. And also, you have to know which is your kernel. It's a different package if you're in the regular Linux kernel or on Linux LTS. There are some open source drivers, but for the newer architecture of NVIDIA cards, but there are still problems with the open source cards. So open source drivers. And by default, you have these open source drivers, uh, which should be stopped when you install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. So early on, there will be a lot of issues trying to install Arch Linux. There will be a lot of problems to solve. And most likely the people watching this video have already tried some other Linux distribution and are looking for a different experience. Don't expect the transition to Linux to be fast and straightforward. The transition to Linux will take a lot of time. So if I started over, what would I do differently? I would 100% install Arch Linux alongside my main operating system. For example, all my life I have been using Windows. So for sure, I would have set up dual boot at the start. I don't recommend having Windows and installing Arch Linux on a virtual machine because Linux systems act very differently on a virtual machine. For example, I tried to install Hyperland on a virtual machine just to try it out. And turns out there's, it's difficult to set up on a virtual machine Hyperland. So if I started over, I would set up dual boot and I will, and I would continue to do all of my work on Windows and that I would gradually transition to Linux. So for starters, I would recommend using Arch Linux just for browsing the internet. Use your first few months experimenting around with Arch Linux, trying different desktop environments, different window managers, different applications, different configurations. You may like tiling window managers or uh, I think dynamic tiling window managers or, or just regular window managers like in Windows or different desktop environments. The first few months should be just experimenting around. Don't get stuck with one configuration. For example, for my first few months, I was just using Xmonad and I, and I really didn't like configuring Xmonad. And when I switched to i3, it was a lot better experience. It was a lot more enjoyable. But the reason I didn't switch earlier to i3 was because I had set up so many things on Arch Linux and I didn't want to set up everything once again when switching to i3. And me personally, just like I advise you to experiment, I've been using Arch Linux for this one year. I have been thinking of trying out Fedora as well because a lot, I hear a lot of positive things about Fedora. So I will follow my own advice as well. So who is Arch Linux for? If you're a computer science student or a programmer, Arch Linux is perfect for you. You will learn a lot about the system. You will learn a lot about Linux and you will code a lot more and especially personal projects. But if you rely a lot on Windows applications, especially ones that do not support Linux, or you have hardware that doesn't support Linux, Linux is not for you. If you prefer spending your time on actually doing the things rather than spending it trying to fix all the problems and learn the operating system, Arch Linux is also not for you. I advise to use Arch Linux what is best at. And for video editing, for example, to do it in the operating system that is best for video editing. Don't rely only on one operating system. So what is Arch Linux best at? Arch Linux is best at configuring your perfect working environment. The configuration that I have and everyone else on YouTube that has is impossible to do in Windows. This is what Arch Linux is best at. You make it your own. It's your own system. You can configure absolutely anything. 
And if there is not a helper program for making your configuration a reality, you can code it yourself. You can code anything on Arch Linux. For example, when I used Mac, I really liked being able to search for any application. And on Arch Linux, I just install Rofi and now I can search for anything and I can open it. If you don't like how Windows has a lot of applications open and your fan is constantly running, on Arch Linux you can have very little applications running and your computer will be quiet. You will almost think that it's not running. The downside of all of that is that you have to spend a lot of time configuring all of that and going through all kinds of errors and problems. A lot of time will be invested trying to configure it the way you want it to be. And there will be a lot of problems that it will feel like it's impossible to solve. So if you're a person that thinks that all that time invested in trying to solve the problems will be a waste of time, then it's not recommended using Arch Linux. You will not have your hand held throughout the experience. And did anything exciting happen? As a computer science student, the most exciting part while using Arch Linux, and the reason I've managed to use it as my main operating system for so long, was that I started coding my own programs. For example, I really wanted a Pomodoro timer, a personal one, so I coded one in Python. And in my i3 configuration, I've made it so when I press F1, it will execute the script. So when I press F1 now, it will start timers. So when I press F1 again, it will read me the current status of my Pomodoro application. I have a Pomodoro running until this time, and the whole session will end at this time. There are two Pomodoros, so I'm running the first one, and there is one left. This is the configuration. The first one is 20 minutes, a 5 minute break. The next Pomodoro is 25 minutes and a 10 minute break. When I pressed Shift and F1, this will pause my timers. And in Arch Linux is where I was inspired to create English as a programming language. Me installing Arch Linux is what got me so motivated to create all of my projects, like using the guitar as a keyboard, adding notes to YouTube, or for example, uh, for DaVinci Resolve, uh, because when I record with OBS, the output file cannot be used from Resolve. It has to be converted. And every time a recording is created, I have to run this command to convert it for Resolve. Arch Linux offers an automation where it listens in the folder where the recordings are saved. And when it sees a new file with the M KV extension, it will automatically run the command and format it for Resolve. And the same when with Resolve, when I render a file, Arch Linux will listen for a .mov file and automatically format it for the web. So in Arch Linux, I can automate a lot of things. I can create my own applications that are li really fast and easy to create. It's the perfect environment to learn computer science and to become a programmer. Especially having access to the terminal. The terminal is really helpful, especially having access to Vim. I really wanted to learn Vim and I cannot learn it well on Windows. Can you play games? You can play some games, but not every game. What most people use is uh, this application. This is the name of the application. L-U-T-R-I-S. In this application, uh, when a game cannot run properly, uh, you can go and configure it and there are some options you can do to possibly make it playable. So gaming is possible, but I still prefer Windows for gaming. It's just that I almost don't game at all. So the only game I play is Terraria, and Terraria works perfectly on Windows, on Linux. It's not that much of an issue for me. Can you find a way to use Windows applications? For some applications, it's possible to try, and the result you get depends on how much you're willing to invest your time. But in some cases, it's just impossible, and you have to search for alternatives. And the alternatives are not satisfying. 
How is Arch Linux different from other distributions? Arch Linux is a rolling release distribution. To upgrade it, you type this, and if I run it now, most likely it will upgrade my system. You get very often releases. The downside to that is that you may get some issues that have to be resolved. Personally, I haven't had a problem upgrading the system. It's not an issue to me. Another difference is the AOR packages. For example, for DaVinci Resolve, you, if you are on other distributions, you have to download it from here and follow the instructions. But for Arch Linux, you have the AOR packages. And there's an AOR package for DaVinci Resolve. So I just have to type yay s DaVinci Resolve and this should install it. The issue is that most likely you have to solve some problems. But usually it's cool that we have some extra packages. When you want to install something, it will be either through Pacman or an AOR package. How is it different from Windows? The main difference is that companies do not prioritize Linux. Most customers to applications use Windows. Maybe Mac will be supported, but don't expect attention if you use Linux. If everyone starts using Linux, it will be another story. And I would love it if everyone used Linux. Linux should be where Windows stands now. The most annoying part using Arch Linux is the frustration around trying to solve problems. For example, for installing the Nvidia drivers, it took me seven days and I had to reinstall my system a lot of times. Because I was new to Arch Linux, I broke my system a lot of times. I don't have a problem learning more about Arch Linux, but it's a bit forced. I don't have time right now to invest more of it trying to install NVIDIA drivers. I, want, I have other things I have to focus on. I'm thinking of bringing back Windows and doing some things on it. And I'm also thinking of experimenting with other distributions and configurations. As I said, I want to give Fedora a try. But the thing I'm most excited about for the future is a personal project of mine where I want to research if it's possible to remove the need of operating systems. In a sense, to remove the problem of creating an application and it running well on Windows, but not on Linux. For example, did you know that in the past, when computers were made, there wasn't an operating system that could run on every machine. Most of the code was for the particular machine itself. But, that, but then came operating systems that could run on every computer. And when you create a program, you don't have to think about the hardware. What I want to research is if it's possible to do the same thing for operating systems. When you create a program, to not have to think about the operating system. In a sense, something like Java, where you code once and, it sh and you debug everywhere like some coders joke, but a bit different than that. Whether it's an exe file or a file on Linux, to be able to run it on any machine, to not need to rely on the operating system. This is what excites me to research for the future.